Hi guys, in this video let's consider and discuss price controls to solve market failure. We're looking at minimum prices, i.e. price floors, and maximum prices, i.e. price ceilings here. Let's focus on a minimum price first, or a price floor. This will be used to discourage the consumption of demerit goods, i.e. where there are negative externalities in consumption. So I'll take a context here of alcoholic drinks. Uh, Scotland have imposed a minimum price on alcohol, we see one in Canada as well, so good context to apply here. And the idea is in the free market at P1 and Q1, there will be an overconsumption and an overproduction of alcoholic drinks here. So by imposing a minimum price above equilibrium, a floor price, which the price can't go below, we will contract demand, you can see that along here, consumption will be discouraged, quantity in the market will fall from Q1 to Q star, the socially optimum level of output, that's the idea. By doing so, the externality will be internalized here. We will solve the overconsumption, overproduction issues. We'll get to allocative efficiency, and thus welfare will be maximized in the market. That's the intention. That's what the idea of the minimum price is. But there are many issues with imposing this minimum price, especially on alcohol. We can argue that there is price inelastic demand here. Um, so when the price goes up, we're not questioning that demand will fall. We're questioning how much will it fall. If there is price inelastic demand, the fall in QD will be proportionally less than the increase in price. And therefore, we might not see a fall in quantity enough to fully solve the market failure. We'll stop here, maybe, instead of getting the Q star. Uh, uh, minimum price is regressive. We often use that phrase only for indirect taxation, but we can use it here as well, even though it's not a tax. It certainly will burden the poor and therefore could widen income inequality in society, where the government lose a key macro objective. That's not the idea of this policy, but it's very, very likely to happen, given that it's regressive. It'll take a greater proportion of the income of the poor than it will of the rich here, burning the poor. Individuals always will find alternative supplies. So if they are suffering because of a higher price and they really want to buy alcoholic drinks still, they could well find alternative supplies in the black market. That is dangerous for them. Who knows about the quality of the good that they're buying in the black market? More, they might find alternative supplies in the form of much cheaper, worse for them alcoholic drinks. Again, not really solving the market failure, potentially making the market failure worse. They may smuggle from abroad. I mean, if it's Scotland here, it's not really smuggling, but it's going to England and buying booze from England instead and bringing it back. Okay, that's not the intention of the policy, but very likely to happen. That could certainly lead to government failure. The other problem with black market activity, um, that tax revenue could well be lost here. They're buying it from illegal sources here, and the government loses out there as well. So very much um, likely to see black market and alternative supply and potential source of government failure there. We can also see an unintended consequences maybe on producers. So the minimum price is set really high, we'll get to that now. It's set really high and it's not internalizing the externality, it's going further than that. There could be an impact on firms here who may suffer, they may leave the country, they may shut down, there might be unemployment caused here. Again, unintended consequences linking to government failure. But good evaluation, if demand is price inelastic, producers will actually see an increase in their revenue here. They will not be punished, they will not suffer, they'll actually gain here. It's a nice eval. But if the minimum price is set too high, uh, it's set above the level whereby quantity needs to reduce to solve the market failure, then these two issues in particular become very severe, guaranteed government failure. If it's set too low, then uh, quantity in the market may not reduce to the socially optimum level. We may not be internalizing the externality perfectly at all. Just bear in mind guys, one thing we can't really talk about here is the notion of an excess supply. That's normally something we talk about for a minimum price. We can't talk about it here because producers won't produce extra thinking the government is going to buy up the excess. They know that that's not going to happen. So they're going to try and produce at the level of demand uh, in the market, which is Q star here. Let's now talk about maximum prices. Maximum prices or price ceilings are used in markets where the price in the market is deemed too high by the government. So by imposing a minimum price or a price ceiling below that equilibrium price, we are promoting equity, we're encouraging more consumption of essential goods or services, like rented accommodation. In cities like New York and in Berlin, the most common examples of rent control, we see a maximum price to encourage more consumption, to promote more equity when it comes to the market for rented accommodation. Of course, people need to have accommodation, right? That's the idea. So you can see on a diagram a reduction in price here. So prices are lower, there is an extension of demand. The idea is that we see more consumption, more equity as a result. And thus we solve that income inequality kind of prevalent market failure, where price exclusion really shouldn't exist in the government's eyes. But there are many issues with imposing maximum prices like this. It's not just rented accommodation, guys. We also see this 
uh, on basic food items in Venezuela for the same ideas. The problem, biggest problem is that a shortage will be created. You can see that on the diagram. Yes, there is an extension of demand, but there is a contraction of supply here. The government creates this excess demand, this shortage, this inefficiency in the market. So those who are able to find the combination at the lower price of PMAX, great for them, no problems for them at all. But what about this chunk of people, the people who are willing and able to buy rented accommodation at that lower price, but are not getting the supply, the people within the excess demand, what happens to them? They don't get the accommodation. That, you can argue, is a pure government failure. Where are they likely to go, therefore? Well, the black market. Of course, landlords are going to be willing to offer rented accommodation at a slightly higher price, of course, than PMAX. And there are going to be many of those within the excess demand who are going to be happy to pay that. We create a black market and that has a very natural consequence here of the shortage created by the government. And that's dangerous for consumers here because they're going to be exploited probably by landlords in the black market. Who knows the prices they can offer? Who knows the quality of the accommodation that they can offer here? That is a government created problem, the black market. Furthermore, the contraction of supply is bad news because we are likely to see more um, producers building uh, sky-rise luxury apartments instead of the cheaper rented accommodation knowing that the price is too low. That's not very good. That's only going to drive out more and more and more the lower income households in a given city. Furthermore, if the prices are lower, the quality offered by landlords here is going to be low as well. So all of these issues as a result of um, having a price below the equilibrium price, a price ceiling here. Black market activity, pure government failure right here. Furthermore, there needs to be enforcement of this. Who is going out and checking? that landlords aren't charging a price beyond PMAX. In Berlin, that's a big issue. So you can always question the enforcement, but you can question whether the maximum price is going to be set at the right level. If it's going to be set too low, there's going to be a massive excess demand here. If it's going to be set too high, so too close to equilibrium, uh, then we're not going to see the promotion of equity and greater consumption that is desired. And we can also say there is cost involved. If governments are not happy with the shortage, they want to try and increase supply to get it to equal QD here, well, that could be very costly. They might subsidize private landlords, big cost involved. They might produce their own housing instead, so build their own housing, very costly as well. Big opportunity cost, a cost that's dealing with their own problems, the inefficiency that they've caused, you can argue large government failure here at the end as well. So not as simple, the intention is simple, but many issues here with both minimum prices and maximum prices. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.